Welcome back guys, hope you're doing awesome and in this video we will continue and now build a convolutional neural network and as usual there are resources of video lectures in the description to find more about the concepts for this video. So with that said, let's get started. We're gonna first import OS then we're gonna do os.environment and do tf uh, cpp min log level and uh, again this is just for ignoring information messages from tensorflow that can be a little bit annoying um, and then we're going to do import tensorflow as tf from tensorflow import keras from tensorflow dot keras import layers and then from tensorflow dot keras dot data sets we're going to import cipher 10. so in this video we're going to take a look at the cipher 10 data set and uh, it's basically na more natural images of, uh, of 10 different classes from airplane, uh, automobile, mobile, bird, truck, etc. And uh, the images are, or we have 50,000 training images, and then we have 10,000 test images, so a total of 60,000, uh, where each image is uh, 32 by 32 pixels, so they are relatively small, and then we have RGB colored, so they are uh, they have three channels. I found this pretty interesting blog post by Andre Karpathy that uh, where he actually trained himself on Cypher 10, uh, and uh, he came to the conclusion. Let's see that uh, Cypher 10 human level accuracy is approximately 94%. And uh, if you actually check the the most recent models trained on Cypher 10, uh, they go a lot. They go beyond this. So. Uh, the more recent models are much, much better than, than human level performance on this data set. Now I'm going to copy in two lines uh, and most likely you don't need them, but if you're running on the GPU and you run into any trouble, then uh, most likely these two lines here are going to help you out. All right, so let's go back to sort of what we actually want to do in this video, which is uh, first we want to load the Cypher 10 data set. And this is very similar to how we loaded uh, MNIST in the last video. And then, so we're going to do X train, Y train, X test, Y test, and then Cypher 10 dot load data. And uh, again, we want to convert it into float 32 because efficiency essentially, computing it in float 64 is a bit of a unnecessary computation. So what we can do is uh, we can do X train equals X train uh, as type and then float 32. And then for normalization, we can also divide by 255 so that the pixel values are between uh, zero and one. And then similarly for X test, we can do uh, X test equals X test as type float 32. And then we're just going to divide by 255. All right, so for our actual model, uh, let's start out with a sequential model and then uh, we're gonna build and make that a little bit more advanced. So we're gonna do model equals keras.sequential and uh, we're gonna start with keras.input specifying the input shape. In this case, since we're using convolutional neural networks, um, we are not gonna reshape it uh, so that we don't, we don't flatten it in the beginning. So that means we're going to maintain the the height. So 32 in height, 32 in width, and then three channels for RGB so that they are colored. So that's the input shape of each image. Uh, then we're going to do layers.conv2d and we're going to do, I don't know, 32 out channels. So the first, first argument here of conv2d is uh, how many channels we want this convolutional uh, uh, layer to output. So in the beginning we have three channels, we want the output to then be 32. Then we're going to specify the kernel size, and we're just going to set that to, to 3. And uh, so if we set just a single integer here, uh, that's going to be expanded to be the same uh, kernel size for the height and the width. So that's essentially uh, writing this, just more, uh, I guess, less verbose, just writing the, the integer and then we can specify padding so here you can specify valid or same so valid here is the default and then so 
what's going to happen is that these pixel values here, if we use uh, same convolution, then they're going to be maintained. So after this layer, there's still going to be 32 pixels height and then 32 pixels width. But if we use uh, valid, then that's going to change depending on our kernel size. So in this case, uh, they're actually going to become uh, 30 by 30 pixels. Uh, so this is essentially just a hyperparameter that you can play around with. I'm just going to set it to valid, although there's really no point since this is the default argument. And then we can set the activation similarly to how we did for our neural network to relu. And then uh, let's do a max pooling uh, 2D. And so here we can specify the pool size, uh, let's say two by two, so that it's uh, half in the input. So for example, uh, if we use a valid convolution here, this is going to be 30 by 30. And of course you can do print model summary to actually see these changes. Um, maybe we can do that actually. So let's do print model dot summary. And let's see. So as we can see here now, after the first comp, it's going to be 30 by 30, and then we have 32 channels. And then after the max pooling, it's going to have the input size pixels. So they're going to be 15 by 15. And then we could do just a, another couple of layers. So layers come to D, let's say 64 out channels, and then same, I mean, uh, kernel size three. And then let's just use valid again and activation relu. Um, let's do another max pooling. And then again, we're going to have 128 channels, so just double it. And then uh, three and activation equals relu again. So then for our actual uh, output, we're going to do layers dot flatten. We're going to have, let's say one intermediate. So we're going to have 64 nodes in this fully connected uh, and activation equals relu. And then for our output, we're just going to do layer dense and then 10 output nodes. So that's for our actual model. Uh, then we're going to com compile our model. So model.compile, uh, let's specify the loss function to be keras.losses.sparse categorical cross entropy. So the same that we used in the last video from logit equals true because we're not having a softmax activation on our output. Um, and then we let's say optimizer, uh, let's use Adam. So we're going to set also the learning rate. Let's set it to three E minus four. Um, and then metrics, let's keep track of, of accuracy. All right. So that's for our model compile. Now to actually train the model, let's just do model dot fit, uh, X train, Y train, uh, batch size, let's set it to 64. And then let's run for 10 epochs and let's say verbose equals two so that uh, it prints after each epoch. And this way uh, you won't get a progress bar, but it's going to print uh, information about uh, the training every epoch. And then after training, let's do model dot evaluate on the test set. And then also again, let's set the batch size to the same and uh, no epochs because we're just going to run it once and then verbose equals uh, two. All right, so uh, let's run this and hopefully we should still have, oh, okay, so let's let's do also print model.summary here and then we can inspect that. So, all right, so we're letting it train. So we can see here that um, we can sort of see the number of parameters. Let's see, it's uh, here are the mo most of the parameters of the model and uh, so as we can see here, we can see sort of the total number of parameters, 225,000. And that's actually a very, very small network. So uh, we're, we're not expecting to get very, very high accuracy on this, but it's sort of just to illustrate how to build convolutions and then uh, using max pooling and so on. I believe that AlexNet, I believe that AlexNet, which was sort of the first uh, convolution on our network uh, that really revolutionized computer vision had about 60 million parameters. So just to get a perspective on how how small 225,000 actually is. All right, so let's see, it's done training. And then it's printing the model summary again. Oh, okay, so let's remove that. And then let's see sort of what we get. So we get 
72% training accuracy at the end, and then 68% test accuracy. Now, uh, as you can see, we have a lot of room for improvement. So if you train this for long, you would probably get a better accuracy, uh, but we're not really interested in that. So what we're gonna do now is um, take a look at how we can build a functional, uh, using the functional API and sort of build a very similar convolutional neural network, but we're gonna add some more advanced things. So uh, let's do, let's actually do a function. So let's do define my model. And then inside this, let's do input equals Keras input and then shape, let's see, uh, 32, 32, 3. And then let's do x equals layers.com 2D. Let's do the same cha channels so with 32 and then kernel size 3. And then we're going to send that, send the inputs through that layer. And then uh, we're going to use batch normalization uh, and the, uh, so that's going to be in the video description if you if you're unfamiliar with batch norm. So batch normalization, and we're going to initialize that, and then we're just going to send in x through uh, through that one. Uh, and then, as you might have noticed here, we're not using a activation function here. That's because if we're using batch norm, we want to um, sort of send it through the convolutional layer first, and then through the batch norm, and then we want to send it through the uh, activation function. So how we can do that is by doing uh, keras dot activations dot relu and then uh, of x. And uh, yeah, so let's add some max pooling, max pooling to D. Uh, and we actually don't have to specify the pool size. So let's see. Yeah, I did it here, uh, but we don't have to. So I should probably have mentioned that when we did this one. But you don't have to specify the pool size to be two by two. That's the default argument. Uh, but of course, you can change it to whatever you want. Uh, it's just that two by two is what you most frequently use. So let's just do max pooling and then send it through that one. And then uh, let's create another one. So let's do layers comp 2D, uh, 64. And I don't know, let's do a kernel size of five. And let's do padding equals same, just for fun. And then let's do another batch norm so batch normalization of x and then keras.activations.relu of x and then after this uh, let's do one more so let's do layers com2d 128 uh, 3 and then of x oh, of x and then another batch norm of x activation relu and then we're going to now send it through a a dense layer so we're going to do layers dot dense 64 nodes uh, and activation is relu and then the outputs is going to be just layers dense of 10 nodes of x and then to create our model we're going to do model equals keras dot model and then we need to specify the inputs and the outputs and it's going to create the model uh, from those so we're going to do outputs and rather inputs equals inputs outputs equals outputs and then we're just going to return our model right so uh, this is this is now our model it's sim very similar looking to the previous one just that we added batch norm and uh, what we can do now is we can do model equals my model we can call that and then we can use the same compile and fit and evaluate as we did for the sequential one. So uh, let's run this now. All right, so we get an error. Let's see what is the problem. All right, so I think I know what the problem is. We need to do a flatten layer in between uh, because the shapes aren't gonna match when we send it through the uh, the fully connected layer. So we're just gonna do layers.flatten and then of X and uh, hopefully it should work now. All right, so one thing we can see here is that after 10 epochs using these batch normalization, uh, it's much faster to train. So I think before it had 72% training accuracy, now it's almost 93%. Although the, the test set accuracy hasn't actually improved that much, it, it, I think it's actually gone worse, uh, which is a obvious sign of uh, the model overfitting to the training data. And so what we need to, when the model is overfitting, we need to 
uh, use uh, regularization in different ways. So that's actually what we're going to take a look at in the next video to try to see how we can improve this uh, to, uh, to make this gap a little bit closer to each other so that uh, there's not this wide of a gap. Here are a couple of suggestions to play around with the code and try to get some more experience. Uh, the first thing is uh, check what kind of accuracy you can get on the test set by you know, training for longer, increasing the model size, maybe changing kernel sizes, uh, play around with padding, um, and so on. The second thing is that in the last video, we trained a fully connected neural network on MNIST. What can you get by using a ConvNet on that instead, on that data set? But anyways, that is how, but anyways, in this video, you saw how to train a basic neural network using the sequential and the functional API. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching the video and I hope to see you in the next one.